iPhone 10 Taptic Engine Replacement Guide. The tools we're going to need are a proprietary pentalope screwdriver that has five rigid teeth, a standard Phillips head screwdriver, a double zero Phillips head screwdriver, a Y tip double zero also referred to as a tri-wing screwdriver, a pair of tweezers, a plastic prying tool referred to as a spudger, a suction cup for pulling the screen apart, a triangular pick tool also for separating the screen, and then a metallic prying tool for separating the screen from the phone casing. Finally, we'll need a heat gun or a hair dryer. Make sure that the phone is completely powered down before we begin. Go ahead and flip the phone over and near the charging port, locate the two pentalobe screws. Go ahead and remove the two pentalobe screws with the pentalobe screwdriver. With the pentalobe screws removed, go ahead and start using the uh, hair dryer or a heat gun to go around the contour of the iPhone and warm up the uh, waterproof adhesive. Do this for about two to three minutes at a distance. Once heat has been applied, go ahead and place the suction cup as close as you can to the charging port. Tug on it with your middle finger while pitching the sides of the phone with your index and your thumb and insert the metallic prying tool right underneath where the home button location is. Then go ahead and insert a plastic pick into the seam and start sliding it down to create a seam separation. Start sliding it down to the right side going around the contour of the phone. You want to use the plastic tool for this not to scratch up the phone screen. Go along the right side as far down as you can then come back and go along the left side you want to take your time and uh, make this separation carefully you don't want to scratch or break anything you should go about the same speed as you hear, see here on video or slower Once you've loosened up the bottom and both sides, go ahead and slide the pick through the top, completing the uh, phone adhesion separation. Now you can go ahead and fold the phone out like a book. There are two cable attachments, one in the top and one in the middle, so be careful not to tear those. We'll need to remove the cover that's securing all the connections to the screen. Go ahead and remove the six tri-wing screws that are securing the cover. Make sure to place them in an orientation in which you will remember where they go back as they are all different sizes. Go ahead and lift the cover and put it over to the side. We'll need to disconnect the three cables that are securing the screen to the phone, starting with the ear speaker. With a plastic prying tool, go ahead and pry underneath the corner of the speaker and just gently push it up and it should come right out. Now for the screen and the digitizer, as you see here. Once separated, you might have to clean up some of the waterproof adhesive around the contour of the edge of the phone. Just peel the adhesive away that has come apart. With the screen out of the way, we'll need to remove the antenna bracket. It's secured with seven screws, four of which are the white tip double zero screws, and then three Phillips head screws. Go ahead and remove the four white tip double zero screws first.
with the four wide tip screws removed, go ahead and remove the Phillips head screw on the left side of the Taptic engine and then the two Phillips head screws on each bottom corner of the antenna. There's one in the bottom right and then one more on the bottom left side. With these seven screws removed, you can go ahead and start peeling the antenna back. It's still attached to the phone, so just tilt it back and then use a plastic prying tool to pop it out of its socket. Here's what it looks like up close. Let's detach the speaker. Go ahead and remove the Y00 screw that's securing the bracket and the Taptic engine and the speaker. Go ahead and remove that bracket. Now with a plastic prying tool go ahead and disconnect the speaker connection from the speaker and now you can just pry the speaker gently up and out of its socket. It's still attached with a little bit of foam on the bottom. You will have to tear that foam to remove the speaker out completely. If you go slow and gentle, you shouldn't be able to damage anything in the process. Here's what the speaker looks like up close. Lastly, remove the Phillips head screw that is securing the Taptic engine in place. Now go ahead and lift up the Taptic engine and disconnect it from the phone. And there you go, here's what it looks like. Reassembly. Place a replacement Taptic engine into its uh, socket in the following orientation. Go ahead and make sure that it's clicked in and reconnected back to the phone. Now secure the top left Phillips head screw first. Place the loudspeaker in the following orientation into its socket. Make sure you're not pressing the speaker cable um, connection in the middle there. Once it feels like it's aligned, go ahead and click the speaker connection in. Make sure it's nice and firm and place the cover over it. Now go ahead and secure uh, that cover with a Y00 screw that goes into that place. Place the antenna cover and align its connector with the phone with a plastic prying tool. Go ahead and make sure you click it in and it's a nice and solid connection. This antenna must be reconnected for it to work, work properly. Go ahead and make sure that that's in. Now tip it right over and push it into its spot. Align all the holes properly. And go ahead and secure the Phillips head screw on the bottom right. And then the Phillips head screw on the bottom left. With the antenna secure, go ahead and re-secure the four Y-tip screws going along the top of the antenna. Now lastly, secure the Phillips head screw on the left side of the Taptec engine. And that's it. It's time to reattach the screen to the phone. Go ahead and align it in the following orientation. Reconnect the screen display cable and the uh, digitizer cables first uh, on the in the middle. Go ahead and align it with the socket and gently press it in. Make sure it's correctly aligned before you apply pressure as you can damage the socket. Do the same for the digitizer. You can use a plastic prying tool to help you uh, apply the pressure. Now 
once you feel like you have a nice and solid connection, go ahead and reconnect the earpiece speaker up on the top um, portion of the connection bridge. Once again, aligning the socket and applying pressure. Then place the cover back over the connection bridge. Align it in the following orientation. Now secure it with the six uh, tri-wing tip screws. Once all the connections are secured by the cover, we want to power on and test the phone before we close it up. So go ahead and power it on. Uh, once everything is tested and it works, power it back off and then we're going to clamp it up. Close it carefully aligning uh, the seam around all the four edges and just start applying minor pressure in the top left corner and start going along the contour of the uh, phone it should click right in you shouldn't feel any uh, real resistance it should just close and clamp up just like you see here now make sure to keep going around the outer edges make sure that everything is tight there shouldn't be any gaps or space in between now go ahead and place the two pentalope screws back into the pentalope screw holes near the charging port and secure them with the pentalope screwdriver now power up the phone again and you should be good to go Thanks for watching, hit like and subscribe and check out more awesome videos at AppleDollars.com.